Hey folks, welcome back to the third and hopefully final installment on the nervous system. Uh, in this segment, we are going to focus on the different branches of the human nervous system. Um, so basically, the, the easiest way to think about it is probably that um, the brain and spinal cord that go down the center of your body are the central nervous system. That's where all of your interneurons are. That's where all of the processing happens. That's where um, you interpret this table as cool and a block of ice as cold. That's where you are processing all of the light wave information that's coming into your eyes, the, the pressure waves that are coming into your ears. Um, all of that is exists only because your brain processes it, uh, interprets it, and makes that feeling for you. So, um, so we have our central nervous system that runs down the center part, and then all of our sensory and motor neurons, the things that are not part of the brain or spinal cord, are part of the peripheral nervous system. So if it's not a part of the brain spinal cord, it's peripheral, which makes sense because your peripheral vision is off on the sides. Um, so yeah, I think you're super intelligent people. So that should make sense. If it doesn't, ask me questions. Okay. So um, ways to think of other ways to think about the nervous system. Um, central nervous system, like I said, is just the brain and spinal cord. Your peripheral nervous system is broken up into two separate branches. You've got the afferent division, which is all of your sensory stuff, and then you have the efferent division. Um, so any sensory neurons are afferent, any motor neurons are efferent. Um, that's a little confusing, so I would prefer probably for you to use just sensory and motor, but it is important to know those words because you'll probably encounter them at some point. So um, before processing, after processing. Um, senses stuff, makes stuff happen, um, I guess is a good way to break that up. So the jobs of your sensory branch are sensing the external environment, obviously, and bringing all that sensory information in, but also sensing the internal environment. So um, CO2 levels, things like that, that uh, heart rate um, that need to be adjusted and, and that sort of thing. All of those things are gonna be sensed as well through sensory neurons. Um, motor neurons, wow, look at that. Motor neurons, we've got two different branches. We have, um, the autonomic nervous system, which basically takes care of all the stuff that you can't control, and the somatic nervous system, which is all of your voluntary stuff. It's all the things that um, it's all the things that you can move or make happen in your body. The autonomic stuff—that's the stuff you can't control. Your heart rate, um, your um, muscle contractions of your smooth muscles or that surround your digestive system. Uh, and those are broken down into two different divisions as well. Um, if something is triggered by the parasympathetic, it's probably impeded by the parasympathetic. So you've got this like dual control, like an on off. This would be the on, that would be the off, or vice versa, depending on the thing that you're talking about. And the next slide is going to show you what I'm talking about. So for example, uh, if the parasympathetic constricts the pupil of the eye, well, the sympathetic is gonna dilate it. Um, if we have stimulation of salivary glands from the parasympathetic, it, that's gonna be inhibited by the sympathetic nervous system. If the parasympathetic slows heart rate, sympathetic is going to accelerate heart rate. Uh, and one of the things that's important to realize is that the parasympathetic uh, nervous system is really located in the in the um, brain stem here and that's that's pretty much where all of those things are are happening um, but any function that we have happening over here um, is going to be the the exact opposite is going to be um, is going to be happening and controlled by the sympathetic division which is uh, largely in the spinal cord. In fact, all in the spinal cord. Uh, brain is important. We have lots of parts of the brain. Um, so we've got the cerebrum, which is the part that you see the most of. And then we have the thalamus, which I'm sure you've heard of, and the hypothalamus, which is down 
kind of under the thalamus. And then the pituitary gland is here at the end of that region. Um, that's the part of your body, your brain that sort of like starts puberty and things like that. There's lots of lots of hormones that are involved. And then we have um, the the brain stem coming down here, and we have um, behind here is sort of the, the hind brain, the cerebellum is here. That's where a lot of balance and movement stuff is controlled. Um, it's the part that's most affected by alcohol as well, which is why movement is, um, well, I guess the whole thing is affected by alcohol, but, um, but that's why your movement is impaired because this part of your brain doesn't work correctly. We have the medulla oblongata here and we have the pons. Um, so those are the various parts of the brain. Um, also important probably to be thinking about the um, the frontal lobe of the brain. That's where you do have a, a motor cortex there that helps you move. You have speech there. Um, this is also sort of like your area of rational thought and that processing, that sort of thing. Then we've got um, the parietal lobe, which is kind of like from the halfway point of your brain down a quarter of the way down the back of your head, I guess. That's where speech and taste and um, word association and that sort of thing comes from. Um, and also where you associate um, things you're feeling and that sort of stuff as far as um, like touch and those sorts of things. And then we have our temporal lobe. Um, that's where you're gonna be um, processing smell and sound and where you're gonna associate sounds with certain things and making connections. And then in the way, way back of your brain, oops, in the way, way back of your brain, I'm just gonna go back real quick, sorry. Uh, in the way, way back of your brain, you have the occipital lobe. Um, and that is where you're going to be processing visual information and visual cues and that sort of thing. And you can actually um, do a brain scan uh, of a live person while they're, um, while they're doing various tasks and you can actually see neuron action um, based on the depolarization of the neurons. It's just the change in charges um, of that sodium rushing in, potassium rushing out and all that jazz. So when someone's hearing words, that's, that's the part that's the most active right there. When people are seeing words and making word associations, it's in that occipital lobe that um, that we see the most actions. And then um, when people are speaking, we've got another area that's triggered. And when we're generating words, we have another area that's triggered. So um, I know lots of people like to say that we only use 10% of our brain. I think that it's probably much more likely that that, one, that's not true. Uh, and two, we're just using different areas of our brain for different things. And there's also some really interesting things um, around these sensory areas. Um, if uh, if a sense, if you are deprived of a sense um, from the earliest stages of development, those neurons will actually generally be reallocated to some other processing of some other sense or some other purpose and will never really be able to um, process the sense that they would, would have processed um, otherwise. So if you weren't given any light sensory information for your entire life, you probably would never see very well be, uh, because during those early forming stages and the early myelination in your brain, um, the neurons that should have been allocated to that sense won't be, uh, which is sort of interesting. And I think we've finally come to the end, just a mere 38 minutes and 40 Eight seconds later. So if you have questions about any of this nervous system stuff, if you want to talk about it in class, if you want to have mini lectures, if you want to have mega lectures, whatever you want to do, let me know and we will do it until you understand how this stuff all works. I uh, hope this was helpful and I will see you in class.